in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. It is your goodwill to visit the nation Nigeria again. According to the prophecy of your servant, one of our ancestors in the Pentecostal faith, and we trust that what you are doing here are the fundamental building blocks to prepare the hearts of your ministers for another mighty move of your spirit in our land. And so we gain alignment tonight. And we trust that your strong hand will rest upon every vessel. In the name of Jesus. Be glorified once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for a few moments. As you turn your Bible to the book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. The currency of salvation was already set in motion after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The grace that brings salvation was available, but some functionaries in the kingdom had to be equipped in announcing the present revelation position of the Spirit so that there can be a return on the investment of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there were 40 days in between the time of the resurrection of Jesus and his actual ascension, public ascension into heaven. There were so many things he could have done with these 40 days, but he decided to set up a capacity building program to equip the functionaries that would be saddled with the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. I'd like us to read the manual for the seminar. Acts chapter 1, beginning from verse number 1. You and to teach until the day in which he was taken up, whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them, together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. From they were therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uh, the, this was a product of the capacity building seminar that Jesus put in place in order to equip his functionaries to understand the scope of the mission, the strategy of the mission, and what is required to qualify a functionary to be able to be considered to undertake that task. First of all, it's needful for us to establish that it was Dr. Luke that gave this account which is captured in the book of Acts chapter 1. He made reference to a former treatise that he made which was addressed to Theophilus. And if you read the book of Luke chapter 1, you will see that it was Dr. Luke that was handpicked as a chartered disciple that had the capacity to bring discipleship to a noble man in that time that was interested to know the ways of the Lord. And Dr. Luke gave him the first three ties, which is the book of Luke. If we had time, we would have looked at the center and the circumference of that three ties. But in the book of Acts chapter one, you will notice that um, Luke is making reference to the book of Luke 
and he summarizes the book of Luke in one verse. It says the content of the former treatise that I made was about what Jesus began to do and to teach. Now the first question we need to ask is what exactly is this doing that Luke speaks about which is fundamental to the ministry of Jesus? You will notice that the doing that he was talking about was obeying his father, functioning under the government of his father. You will notice if you, if you check the account of what happened during his baptism, that the father came publicly to attest to all of humanity that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That because his preoccupation was to access what was on the heart of his father, and to prosecute it. The way Jesus measures his day is the degree to which he has provided adequate representation of his father. Now, his teaching ministry was established on 30 years of doing, of obedience. Three years of teaching on the foundation of 30 years of obedience. It's like one decade of obedience to one year of teaching. Now, when we talk about obedience, don't be in a hurry to think you know what I mean. Because some time ago, I woke up in the morning, I saw how I, I did personal Bible study for my own personal edification, and I wanted to study some salient um, issues so that I can make adjustments. And I found I could not escape obedience. So I now made it a prayer. I'll go to God in the morning and say, do you know what? I want to obey you today. That's the day that I'm going to move in the flesh more than any other day. <laughs> Insult someone in a strange way. I know you are, you are up there. You are not like me. <laughs> you know. So I noticed that when I started becoming deliberate about obeying God, there was so much ability to operate in the flesh. So I knew that it was a battle. So I would come back in the evening, apologize to God. You know, I tried. <laughs> but uh, I messed up. Can you have mercy on me? Tomorrow morning I will pray again. I want to obey you. Then I step out and a similar thing happened. And then after about three months, Consistently, I noticed I started having some form of harmony. I started having some form of, yes, when I come back, I'm excited. And I go back to God. It is something that must be cultivated deliberately. That was how Jesus lived. You say you want to preach the gospel, the authority of your teaching ministry will be predicated on your life of obedience. There will be no authority. God will not back what you are teaching up if your rank in obedience is not high. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there will be a problem with your hearing God if you are not obedient to God because the last time you heard God clearly was the last time you obeyed him. And so Dr. Luke gave us an executive summary. He said Jesus began to do first before he began to teach. Hallelujah. It means that naturally some subjects I don't even have authority to teach because I'm not doing yet. My teaching should be a reflection of what has been established, what the Holy Ghost has constituted in my life. And I'm walking freely in those areas by reason of the grace that God has bequeathed to me to function that way. There are many things I will not teach, even though I've studied them in the Bible and I know them. I'm still in the process of incubating the protocol that will give me access to the grace that makes it work. Preaching is not talking. It's not a lecture. If, if, if your objective is the release of life, the release of the Spirit, so that God can begin a construction in the life of the people that you are ministering to, then your life of obedience is critical to the achievement of that objective. 
The first issue that is raised here is the issue of a life of obedience. A life of obedience. If you, are, if you begin to walk in obedience, you will discover that some things that people call blessing, Jehovah calls woe. He says woe about some things. Your life might be a little bit different from the average person that doesn't bother about the values that you hold dear. You might even be called a Jew just because you have decided that your life will take the shape of obedience. You will adequately sit under the influence of the government of God and allow that government to shape you to knock off every symptom of rebellion that is locked up on your soul so that your vessel can become a warehouse that God can possess to actualize a great task upon the face of the earth. That's the first matter that we see in this scripture. Secondly, are you still with me? Having understood the background, the context, the Bible says that Jesus, are you there? Jesus gave commandments to the apostles that he had chosen. That means um, the apostles he did not choose. He didn't give them any commandment. This is supposed to be a lecture. I think I need to establish the fact that it is supposed to be a seminar. Hallelujah. Okay, in, in verse 3, we will adequately establish that it's supposed, it is a seminar. But in order for you to be admitted into the seminar, you need to have a record with God. The first record you need to have is a record of obedience. Second record you need to have is a record of aligning with God's government enough for him to give you commandments. It is only apostles that he had chosen that he gave commandments. Every investment God makes on your life attracts a commensurate commandment that will help you adequately tend that investment, that spiritual capital, to the point where it is capable of generating a return on investment that is worthy of God. Are you with me? For instance, the anointing you are carrying, do you know there are rules of engagement. There are rules that support the adequate tending of that anointing. There are prescriptions when spiritual investments are made. There are prescriptions. If I ask those of us in the audience, what is the prescription that accompanied your anointing? Because when the Lord began, to, meanwhile, are you there? When he began to, I taught the Bible. I taught the Bible for 12 years. After 12 years, Jesus encountered me in the place of prayer and told me, teach now. <laughs> so I now became confused. I said, so what have I been doing for 12 years? He said, teach now. Do you realize that that is a commandment? <laughs> You will never have the full scope of authority that accompanies one that is sent if you are not commanded to do something. He began to give me insight into the shape of the anointing he was going to trust me with and that I'm going to be under probation for a so, so, so number of years. If I pass the test, then he will release this aspect. These are the principles, these are the laws that govern this investment. If, if you have not come to a point where his interaction with you is about commandments, we may be in doubt whether you, you have been chosen because it's only the apostles that he had chosen that he gave. You see, the difference between Jesus' lecture and a normal lecture in the university is that no lecturer commands you. This one, the lecture has not started. In order to prepare you for the lecture, he's giving you Commandments, because you have a genuine, a unique shape in God. We are not here for mass production. 
you have a unique shape in God. You are a unique precious stone in that building, that construction that God is doing. The laws that govern your operation are consistent with the investment that you carry. Uh, are you there? Uh, amen. You know, the moment I walked in here when I met your wife, I told her, I don't think I prayed enough. And then my wife was now talking to me because she was with me. Since, I've been praying since yesterday. The last time I was giving commandment about how much I need to pray before I stand here, if you allow me to share with you, it is seven hours. But there has been a recent upgrade and I've not been able to find the limit yet. And that's why I said, not because I, I was sleepy. You are not with me. You, you, you know, most of us think ministry is just performance. If it's performance, you don't need to be called. The reason why you are called is because it's not lucrative. Come with me. Let's go to the north. Let's go to the north. Stay with me for six months. If you desire ministry again, you are called. You need to be sure where I come from. You need to be sure of what you are doing because you are doing what you are doing at the risk of your life. So you must be sure of it. You must be sure of it. So a little change has taken place in their location. And I've not yet understood the commandment at this level. So I just keep investing. After a while, I will understand so that I know what to do in order to, to, to get the back of God. When last did you, read, you, did you receive commandments about your finances? You know, pastors know how to ask people to give. Do you give? Do you really give? We ask people to pay tight. Do you pay? Is it true? That without supervision, you can stand erect and follow God and follow his voice? Is it true? Do you know what it means to please a spirit? Do you understand the jealousy that accompanies the intentions of a spirit? The reason why the spirit will be jealous over you is because you are the only, only way he can be advertised. The symptoms of his reality will be afflicted on you. That's how people will know him. And that's why he doesn't want to share you with another spirit because that spirit too will put, it will be difficult to, to identify. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you know what it means? Have you ever labeled in the place of prayer before and you wanted to leave and God said, no, it's not time. And then you stayed till he said, go. How long did it take? Oh, many of you don't know what I'm talking about. He gave, is the apostles that he chose. He gave them commandments. So the two things, the two requirements that you need before you are admitted into the lecture, the seminar, is a life of obedience and the the willingness to receive the burden of commandments from the Lord that will shape your expression. It is only when you walk that way that the uniqueness of your calling will be made manifest. You know we are so many here, but God, you are not a product of your production line. There is a uniqueness about you that will never come to pass except you receive commandments from God as to how to administer the shape of your calling. Your calling has a shape and it's only the commandments of the Lord that will unveil it. It will interest you therefore to know because the seminar begins from verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion 
by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and the subject of the seminar was the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Are you there now? Do you still realize that before they were even admitted, he chose them, he gave them commandments. Are you there? But before they were admitted into the lecture, he had to do something to them. He had to show himself alive to them. They, is Jesus alive to you? Or you heard it, you read it. Have you seen the risen Jesus? Your message is going to be weak. Your efforts will, will fall short of what is required if you have not encountered the living Jesus. And, and that's what he will do for you. He will do... Are you there? This showing himself alive that I'm talking about is not doctrinally, it's not in the Bible. It's not showing you from Scripture that I'm alive. No. He said by many infallible proofs, undeniable investments that he will make on you so that you cannot, even if you are at gunpoint, you cannot deny the impression that he has made on your heart because he showed you beyond doubt that he is alive. Now, now, for many of us here, what I'm saying may not make so much sense. But me, speaking to you, I was born a stammerer. And I was next to dumb. Intellectually, I tried. But the ability to communicate did not come naturally to me. At the age of 7 to 12, I started seeing visions of myself preach. At the age of 13, that's when I saw four angels for eight hours. And I asked one of them, why, why will you call someone to preach that doesn't have the ability to preach? Hallelujah. He did not answer me. He was reading a scroll of my destiny. Reading the scroll of my destiny. And I touched him again. I said, How come someone that is, meanwhile, what he read in the scroll was that I was called to be a preacher? I stopped him again. I said, How come I'm being called to preach when I don't have the ability to speak? Then the angel stopped reading, closed the scroll shouted. The shout was, is what we call thunder and struck me with a scroll. Now when he struck me with a scroll, that's how I discovered that I was in this world. Hallelujah. But do you realize that the encounter I had didn't take the impediment away? I went on a long fast and I was lying on the floor when Jehovah spoke to me that I have put my words in your mouth. So wisdom interpreted what God said, and wisdom now revealed to me that it was now God's responsibility to re manifest the thing he has put inside. So all I need to do is to pray for long to get a message from God. Once I get it, the ability to speak is not mine. The ability to speak is God's. Are you there? Those days, I could be stammering on my seat. The moment I step here, the ability to speak comes upon me. I walked in that until I got the ability to even speak naturally. The one that made me speak is the creator. I know. It's too real to me. As long as I can speak, it means it's a lie. So if you are in this place and you have never had an encounter of the reality of Jesus, stop all you are doing. Go to redemption camp. Take a room. Don't come out. If not, you will cause problem for us. You, you will be a strange problem for the body. Go take a room there and tarry there. Let them be bringing apple to you in the evening <laughs> for 50-something days, 40 days. You will come out when you come out, you will know that God doesn't need eternity to do what is eternal. <laughs> to whom he showed himself alive. He was raising revivalists, people that would take this fire from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth, to your village. 
and he was incubating them. He said, you cannot do much if you don't have an encounter. Many of you seated here cannot preach to, to a native doctor. You are not sure of what you carry, whether it can make impact. In fact, you are even afraid for your safety. You have not seen him. We have too many people talking, talking, talking. Only a few men have touched him. Have you seen him? Have you come close enough to see him? If you have, he will do something to your heart and there will be nothing left for you to fear. If we are going to carry the button from where our great fathers have taken it, the demand for genuine ministers right now is high. The problems are much. Our accuracy must be undoubted. Our authority must be confirmed. Have you seen him? Please help me ask your neighbor, have you seen him? To whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. I remember when the Lord was trying to make me understand that there was a lot of persecution that was part of my service delivery. He wanted me to know that. So I was praying one day and the electricity went off. And when the electricity went off, my wall began to emit light for 30 minutes. And I loved it. My wall, do you know what I'm talking about? My wall became a fluorescent tube. And there was light in my room, even though the electricity had gone off. It was there for 30 minutes. And I was thanking him for revealing he, himself to me. He said, the reason why I came like that is because you are going to be persecuted. So that you will remember uh, that's why I gave you a spectacular encounter because you are going to be in the dark but this light you have seen will remain alive in your heart forever. Is there something that God has done on your life that persecution cannot kill, that the sword cannot kill, that imprisonment cannot kill? If it's not deep enough, go to redemption camp. We have too many noisemakers saying they are preaching the gospel. Let me push further and then stop so that we can pray for 15 minutes. Because we need to, re the fire must be rekindled. That's what this conference is about. Even if you don't believe in fire, that you came here, you must carry some. Hmm. <laughs> And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father. We said, he, ye have heard of me. I thought, are you there? I thought that since we were dealing with the Holy Ghost, the subject of place should not should not be in the equation. You know, it's the Holy Spirit. So you can contact him anywhere, anyhow. But you see, in order for the investment that was to come, which we read about in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, in order for that investment to come, in order for the fire to come, in order for the spiritual capital to come, there were demands of alignment that needs to be fulfilled. So there are three places that you must be in. The first is your secure place. Are you with me? Your secure place. That's where, that's the presence of God. That's where you hear the voice of God. You must have a culture, a culture of the closet, a culture of intercourse with God. That is where you receive what seasons cannot change. That's your secure place. And I know that a few of us here have a robust, secure place, but it's not sufficient. The fact that you have a secure place 
doesn't make you sufficient for this journey. Are you there? Then we have the appointed place because there is an order that is set up in the body of Christ that is designed to cover you in that assignment that you want to carry out. There's, there's a system, there's a structure in the body of Christ, in the physical body of Christ that is designed to protect you. You see, when you have a secure place, you begin to enter into your, the scope of your personal anointing. But you see, the anointing that is set up in order for God to achieve an agenda, an anointing that is set up in order for God to fulfill a plan of his, is much more than the anointing that you are carrying as a believer. Are you there? So even though you have a secure place, there is an appointed place. There are human beings that your destiny is connected to. You need to be in alignment with them. Whether you like it or not, that's one of the things you need to find from God, the human beings that your destiny is connected to at various levels. Because that context is your secure place. And you see, as powerful as God is, he said, go and carry weight in Jerusalem. Why didn't, why didn't he say New York? It's Holy Ghost now. You can come anywhere. You can come into the Middle East. There's a prescription as to where you need to be in order for the investment to come upon you. Are you there? And every time you find yourself in the crucible of a wrong setting, you deplete. Something in you begins to die because there is an arrangement. There is an administrative arrangement that is supposed to support what God has called you to do. Even though we are strong in our closets, the formation is not individual. There is a corporate outlook to things and you must know where you plug in in the body of Christ. So we have the secure place, we have the appointed place. That appointed place, God will choose it for you. The secure place is available to any believer and every believer that is willing to do business with God, but that will not take away the need for the appointed place. So when you begin to grow in the unique grace that is upon your life, there are people that have carried that grace before. There is a tribe that your expression is supposed to fit into so that you understand. You see, there's, we don't have enough time to waste time and learn by experience. You can learn many other ways. There is an appointed place. And he, he said, wait there. Because your location is going to come in that arrangement. It is when you have a very powerful, secure place and you are consistent, you are in alignment with his appointed place for you, then you can be a champion in the marketplace. You can be a champion in the arena that he has created for you to function in. Many people function without structure. And when the devils, the territorial demons in those places that you have been sent to, when they wake up, they see that your obedience is not complete. And many people suffer losses just because they don't take time to understand that Jesus will prescribe your appointed place. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. When you see men that Satan cannot destroy, they are in alignment. Satan would have gained if he can destroy them. But the reason why they are still the way they are, they are indestructible because there's a, an invincible alignment that protects them. That man is in place. You cannot be a revivalist out of place. You can't stand it. The opposition will crush you. Please help me ask your neighbor, your co-minister, how is your secure place? When lads, did you hear God on your knees?
as you grow and grow in the things of the Spirit, if you have more than seven people that are your friends, you are, you are a very wise man. There is a structure that God has put in place to incubate what is on your life. If you have more than seven people that are close friends, then it means you are a very wise man to maintain that number. That's a crowd. <laughs> There's an appointed place that will grow the investment that God has placed over your life. I speak in parables. Before we enter the prayer aspect, Jesus said, we cannot do this business of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God outside of power. He's still in the seminar. He said, but you shall receive power. You shall receive dunamis. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Do you realize that Jesus gave a prescription as to how they should model the flow of the river of revival? He, he prescribed it. He said it must begin from Jerusalem. Are you there? It must, he prescribed it. Now, is there a prescription on your life? This is where you will start. This is how you will go. Many of you think revival is haphazard. It's just Holy Ghost take control. He gave a very clear prescription to the part of the river of revival. Meanwhile, if I were there, I would have raised my hand. Because Jerusalem is a home of Judaism. You don't make converts out of Jews. That's the oldest belief system that history can record. And say, you want to make, you want to start this move in Jerusalem? Ah, I would have. And what Jesus is making available that makes it logical for us to begin in Jerusalem is power. It means Jesus knows something about power that we do not know. Meanwhile, I need you to understand that the opposition that the apostles faced in taking on Jerusalem with the systems that have been established there is much more than what we have in opposition with the spirit of the bondwoman in our nation. Far much more. But by power. <laughs> ah, power. We can't do it without power. Part of what I'm praying that God will do to us is an activation of power. Because those of you that work in the bank, if you pray for the sick in the bank, I hope you know everybody falls sick once in a while. And then there's someone right there in the bank that has healing hands. The patronage you will have will be multi-religious. When I was still in public service, I, I experienced that grace a little. Because nobody wants to die. <laughs> My mom is from that background, that one. So when her elder brother, that happens to be a strong man in that way, was sick, my mom now went to him and said, this is my son, do you still remember him? He said, yes. He said, he prays for sick people. Do you receive this kind of... <laughs> do you accept this kind of prayer? My uncle said he accepts all kind of prayer now. <laughs> power. No, everybody needs it. He said, and you, there's a spiritual capital you are going to receive. It will come in, in spirit form. And that is the potential. That is the warehouse for the possibilities of power. So that means if you know how to deal 
properly with that spiritual capital, one of the products that should come out of adequately dealing with the capital is that power will emerge. Because dunamis means potential energy, just like crude oil. Then when you put crude oil into the fractionating column, into the refinery, sorry, the refinery, that's the name you know, but it's a fractional distillation column for those of you that are chemists. Then it fractionates that complex mixture. The investment of God that is upon your life is a complex mixture. It is when you put it into that fractional distillation column, which is speaking in tongues, it begins to, the products, and one of the products, short products that you will get is called what? Power. There are other products, there are other products that will come. The ability to hear God is part of the product that will distill out of the complex mixture. Do you understand that? So many things will come out of that chamber. If you apply high temperature and pressure, things will distill out. So the entire compendium of the possibilities that God wants to bequeath to us is coming to us in a crude state. And a refinery, not the type we have in Nigeria, a true refinery should run for 25 years before they do turn around maintenance. So if your own refinery breaks down every two months, even in Ajegunle, your face will not shine. <laughs> How long can you keep your refinery alive? My wife is, oh my God, you are not with me, you are not with me. How long? Break down. We are having turnaround maintenance every week because you lose the steam. You cannot tend it. You can't tend it. So you cannot see the products. The scarcity of power in the land, scarcity of accurate men that can pick the mind of God in the land. Meanwhile, all of these abilities are summed up in the spiritual capital that God has given you. And Jesus said, we cannot accomplish this task without power. Is there power on your life? Because the average pastor these days has decided to, to, to orchestrate a model of service delivery that, that denies power. Uh, it's, it's our modern mode. You want to avoid the complex mixture and the refinery, then you can't get a revival from that arrangement. If revival will come, then we need to go back to the refinery. When you switch it on, you don't switch it off anymore. My wife is here. She, she knew me as a single, and I'm married to her now. She knows my refinery. She knows it. She saw me from yesterday praying, today, this evening. Yes. It's been like that for a long time. Tomorrow again, I start early. Hey, make sure your refinery doesn't go down. Now, we're actually in the practical mode now. So you, if you want to sit or stand, anyone that is applicable. But listen to me. The Lord came to me in the place of prayer. And he wants to remove someone's glasses. You don't need to believe me. You don't need to. Jesus came to me this evening. He said he, he wants to remove someone's glasses. So I'm going to pray briefly at some point so that the glasses can be removed. Can we ask God a, a request that your refinery, I don't know the state of your refinery right now. Can you, can you be determined that that refinery will not need turnaround maintenance for the next 40 years? It will be steaming. Products will be coming out. Power will come out. Wisdom will come out. Direction will come out. That I will allow it crash again. It crashed before. But it will not crash again. I say mile kobi na kabosala. Semunantos keto be la kila mama mama ya. Aila baba suke branteli. Famina kapeskove la batala makonde. Ebraske komba, ebraske takante korea. Esima mama, we lay hold on your grace. 
don't allow that refinery run down don't allow it run down the complex mixture is a compendium of everything that God needs to release to you to accomplish his purpose for your life but it's your responsibility your responsibility to run the refinery that's the only gift we have received from the spirit that you can operate at will so you determine the extent to which you go you determine how strong you become you determine how powerful you become and he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon him then shall you be my witnesses we need to be a witness of his resurrection that he is alive right now it will not be by debate it will be by power by power by power by power in the name of Jesus now listen listen and I beheld and I saw a linen garment dripping out of heaven there is a lady here there is a lady here your calling is that you are called to carry the presence of God from place to place listen to me, listen listen, I have even seen the angel that was dispatched from the Lord to support you in that venture in the, if I speak the truth if I speak the truth in the next 12 seconds the hand of God will come upon that lady if I speak the truth Now, those of you with eye problems, can you remove your glasses and lay your hands on your eyes for the next uh, few moments? Lay your hands on your eyes quickly in the next few moments. There's someone that God will heal now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every blinding spirit blinding spirits be bound in the name of Jesus Christ let your yoke on those eyes break in Jesus name I command that I I see in Jesus name all right remove your hands check the eyes Listen, the rule is this. If nothing happens, don't say anything. But if something happens, don't keep quiet. Check your eye if you need to read, if you need to see light. And you know that there's a change on your eyes. The moment you know, wave me like this. There's a change on your eyes. Come quickly. Come quickly. Run, run, run. I don't have time. Now, as they are trying to come, are you with me? Oh, I was hoping we could, someone could receive the gift of healing this night. Now, listen to me. This is our time. This is the season of Nigeria. Everyone that is in this place, you have a part to play in something very mighty that is about to come. This meeting is strategic, it's prophetic. Oh my God. Oh my God. You are going to receive something from the Lord tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, what happened to you? What did you notice? Glaucoma and then I mean I got to light and you know but 
The thing came back. There's no blurriness now. Okay. You know, it just went. Now, from what I see, someone else has been healed on the eyes. Can you shake me? Shake me. So that it will not, it will, it, yeah, it will be permanent. In the name of Jesus. Yes. You, what happened to you? Um, the same astigmatism. But when you said I should, should lift her, remove her hands from my eyes, I could see you clearly. She, 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 she could see. Now, listen. You can see too. Tell us. Now, oh my. Hey. I see three lamps. I see three lamps. Wait, 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 wait. I see three lamps. Three lamps. There are three intercessors here that God wants to promote. He wants to promote you. He wants to change your rank. And the hand of God will come upon you so strong now. To come upon you. It's an investment. Ah, there's one here. One here. The hand of God will come upon you. So strong. So strong. I closed my eyes because I normally have this itching pain. Okay. okay. And it's all gone now. It's gone now. Yeah. Shake me. It's permanent. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is willing to something like an electric shock will come upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are your ministers in the labor of the gospel and we need equipment that you will release the healing anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. If you can hear me, hear me. I see in the spirit there's an angel of God that has been released here carrying a gift. A gift from heaven. A gift. There is someone here and you are in the midst of spiritual warfare. And you've been praying but praying amiss. But God is releasing a gift into your life. It's a prophetic gift. It will switch on when you go to sleep. And you begin to see things. You will know how to fight. Two people as a sign that the Lord is releasing it in mass. Grace is released on your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we pray finally? And say, Lord, do not allow anything take me from the, away from the place of prayer. Do not allow it. Satan will fight your commitment. He will fight your focus. He will strive to take you from that secret place. He will strive. But you want to ask for help. Lord, Lord, let Satan never succeed. Let Satan never succeed. My journey of intimacy it's an eternal journey. And Satan will not succeed on my case. Seiko balido masaye tobina. Gabro sedima mantala. Hasakaita. Epaminantola. Esama kadeboboria. Esima kandalataya. He will not succeed. Praying ministers will begin to arise. Men that understand the ministry of the inner chamber. Oh! Seli kobre manakante baboria. Escofela mina shika brante. Abala makabarata babola kade gadeata. Laisa menia lo comba i presco fe la macusa ai compele ai cosa macote mala <laughs>